Leah. I'm Sean. I'm Ron. And, and we're, we're going to talk, talk to you about, about why, why you should let, let us borrow, borrow the car. car. From the very beginning, we've learned all about reaction time. What it is, how it plays into driving, and what affects the reaction time. Reaction time refers to the time it takes for you to react, plus the time it takes for you to complete the action. You see something, you think, your brain sends a signal to your muscles to move, and you move. Now that we know our own personal reaction times and based on the experiments, we now use this knowledge to consider while we drive. So some factors that affect our reaction time are conversation in the car, multitasking, changing a CD or the radio, talking and texting on the phone, eating and drinking or sneezing, uh, how tired you are, what medications you take, drugs or alcohol, your age and your personality. If you have a more high-strung personality, then your reaction time is generally better. The faster your reaction time, the less likely you are to get into an accident while driving. You'll be able to see things earlier and avoid possible situations that could hurt you or others. So, we now know how to keep full attention to the roads while we drive. Take a look at this distance versus time graph. You can tell that the car is going in a straight line, so it's at a constant speed. And then we see something, so we stop for a period of time, and then we'll keep going at a constant speed again. In this velocity versus time graph, you can see that the velocity is starting a little bit above zero. As it starts at a little bit above zero, it is increasing in, in speed over a period of time. Uh, in re regard to a distance versus time where it is at a constant speed, velocity versus time is moving quicker, is going faster as it go, uh, increases in time. Learning following distance, we can calculate how far or close we should be to the car in front of us, thanks to this class. We learn how to estimate distances based on various experiments like walking the lengths and measuring using a meter stick. We can now accurately estimate how far or close we should be to a car while considering the road conditions, speed, and conditions of our brakes. This is an example of an unsafe Oh no, a squirrel! Ah. <laughs> Oh no, a squirrel! Oh, Lua is very nice! Braking distance is the distance a car travels as brakes are applied until it stops. When we find braking distance, we can find braking distance by considering the final speed versus the initial speed plus the acceleration of the car. We learned that if you double your speed, the braking distance will quadruple. Here's the reason why. To find braking distance, the formula is distance equals the initial speed squared over 2 times the acceleration. In other words, if you double your initial speed, it means that the stopping distance increases exponentially. Braking distance depends on speed and acceleration of the car. This leads us to dealing with the yellow light problem. The yellow light model is used to design safe intersections controlled by traffic lights. We learned that a controlled intersection is dependent on speed limit, width of the intersection, time of the yellow light, reaction time of the driver, and conditions of the brakes. Considering these factors, we can determine that a go zone and the stop zone, which allow us to decide whether or not we can proceed or stop, without breaking the law, of course. Recently, we learned about centripetal force and acceleration, which also includes Newton's laws of motion. His first law states that a moving object will move in a straight line forever at a constant speed. Okay. If we're driving on an icy road and we encounter a patch of ice while turning, we know based off of what we learned about centripetal acceleration that the car will go straight, tangent to the circle, um, when it loses friction. Friction provides the centripetal, centripetal force which allows the car to follow the circle or turn while we drive. So now we know what to consider while driving to make sure that we are safe, smart, and classy thanks to what we learned in physics.